Jude Almeida, Virus Detective, The Woman Who Discovered the First Human Coronavirus, written by Suzanne Slade, illustrated by Elisa Paganelli. June's favorite days were school days. After the family breakfast, Dad headed out to work. Then June, Mum, and baby Harry set off down the street of Glasgow, Scotland. They walked past Alexandra Park and the tenement buildings where June's friends lived. But when June saw her beautiful school, she ran as fast as her legs would go. She couldn't wait to get to class. Always curious, June loved learning, especially about her favorite subject, science. She was excited to share her discoveries with her parents. Little Harry listened too, until something better came along. When June was 10, Harry became very sick. Soon, he passed away. Sadness swallowed the family like a deep, dark hole. Years flew by. June thought about Harry often and treasured memories of him like priceless jewels. As June grew, so did her passion for science. In biology, she discovered tiny cells make up the human body and learned how they each have jobs to do. June was so enthusiastic about science, she won the top science prize at school. June was easy to talk to and had lots of friends. After school, she read stacks of books. Her favorites were science fiction. Creative and observant, she loved photographing the beauty and surprises she found in nature. June was always on the lookout for the perfect picture. She noticed small details and her keen eye helped her create stunning photos. June dreamed of studying science at a university, but college was expensive. Her father was a bus driver, which didn't pay much. Her mother's job at a local shop didn't either. With no savings for college, she left school at age 16 to help pay the family bills. June wanted to find a meaningful job. Fascinated by biology, she hoped to learn more about it. She also longed to help people with illnesses like her brother. So she applied to work at the nearby hospital. With her top grades and interest in biology, she was hired to work in the lab. She learned to use a microscope to magnify and examine cells from sick people. Her findings helped doctors treat patients. In 1952, June's family moved to London, England. She found a job in a hospital lab there. On weekends, June strolled around London, admiring the sights. One day, she met an interesting artist named Henry. They fell in love and married. The two decided to start their life together in Canada. With her experience, a new research lab in Toronto quickly hired her. June began working with a powerful electron microscope that magnified things 25,000 times, much more than microscopes she'd used before. Instead of using light, this huge microscope shot a beam of electrons at the sample being examined. It recorded how the electrons acted when they hit the sample and then created a detailed picture. These pictures gave doctors a close-up look at cells and viruses, the tiny particles that make people sick. The microscope's photos were helpful, but it was hard to tell which tiny blobs were viruses and which were cells. A photographer at heart, June was determined to get better pictures. The then scientists could learn more about how viruses worked. June pondered this perplexing problem. She knew that when a virus made someone sick, their body created antibodies. Those antibodies would surround a virus like tiny soldiers to fight it. After destroying a virus, the antibodies remained to protect against future attacks. June decided to see if antibodies would show her which blobs were viruses. So she put antibodies and virus particles together. Using the electron microscope, she blasted them with an electron beam. Like moths drawn to light on a dark summer night, the antibodies crowded around the virus, just as she'd hoped. June's pictures astounded scientists. Her skill in the electron microscope created clear pictures that helped them find and study viruses. In 1960, June and Henry welcomed a new family member, a beautiful baby girl. June cherished her time at home with her daughter. After returning to work, June continued her remarkable research, wrote science papers, and earned a promotion. She spoke to large groups eager to hear about her work. A scientist at a London hospital was so impressed, he asked June to join his lab. She was thrilled, so her family packed their bags and moved back to London. 
Meanwhile, a researcher named London named David Terrell was baffled by a virus that had given the young boy a nasty cold. His entire team couldn't identify the mysterious virus, which made everyone wonder, was it a new virus? David was skeptical anyone could solve this mystery, but he'd heard Dune was an expert at find, figuring out viruses that stumped other scientists. So he asked her to help. She agreed and David shipped her the virus sample. When it arrived, June couldn't wait to get started. Since it was an unknown virus, there were no antibodies to help find it, but she knew a technique called negative staining that might work. After years of practice, she was quite skilled at it too. First, June used a glass tool and water to separate the virus particles from the rest of the sample. Then she added a drop of acid, which turned the liquid containing the virus particles black as ink. With this black background, the virus would be easier to see like white chalk on a blackboard. Using thirsty filter paper, she removed the extra liquid. Finally, June shot a beam of electrons at the sample with her microscope to create sharp pictures. Then came the moment she'd been waiting for. Her well-trained eyes carefully scanned the picture. She spotted the mystery virus. Looking closely, she noticed each virus blob had tiny dots circling it like a crown. June was stunned. Years before, she'd seen two other viruses that looked just like it, both from sick animals. In fact, she'd written a science paper about them, but researchers had rejected her paper because they didn't believe she'd found a new virus. They thought her pictures were just blurry photos of a common flu virus. Now June had found a third virus that looked like the other two. It proved this was a new virus. June met with doctors to discuss her incredible discovery. They thought the dots surrounding the virus looked like a crown too. The Latin word for crown is corona, so they decided to name it coronavirus. June and David published a paper with her pictures to tell others all about the coronavirus. June greatly enjoyed her work. She also loved spending time with her husband and daughter, but Henry missed Canada and longed to move back. June couldn't imagine leaving her job or London. Sadly, Henry returned to Canada and the two divorced. Now a single mother, June was busier than ever. Fueled by her passion, June kept studying viruses that made people sick, such as rubella, hepatitis B, and HIV. She patiently created new virus images. Many appeared in medical books. Her pictures helped scientists develop medicines that could attach to viruses and block them from making people sick. Years later, June retired from her research, but she still loved to learn. She taught herself to play the flute, studied antiques, and fixed fine china. She also learned how to use a digital camera. And of course, she kept creating amazing pictures. Poem by June Almeida, with apologies to poet William Blake. Virus, virus, shining bright in the photoscungic night, what a mortal hand or eye dare frame the fivefold symmetry. June Almeida modeled her humorous poem after William Blake's poem, The Tiger. The first two lines refer to the phonofungetic acid she used to turn the liquid surrounding virus particles black, making it easier to see bright white virus particles. The last line describes a virus particle with five identical sections. More about Jane. Jane Almeida was a dedicated virologist who spent decades studying viruses. A virus is a tiny particle that's too small for our eyes to see. There are about 10 no non million, one with 30 zeros after it, different viruses on Earth. Fortunately, very few are harmful to people. June was extremely skilled at using an electron microscope to take detailed photos of virus particles. Her patience, persistence, and attention to detail were just some of the qualities she possessed that helped her create exceptional images. June was only 34 years old when she discovered the first human coronavirus. Coronaviruses are actually a family of different viruses. Back then, scientists didn't think coronaviruses were a serious threat to people because they only seemed to cause common colds. While a cold is annoying, the human body can usually fight it off in several days. Though June did not attend college, her research and science papers were so impressive that the University of London awarded her a master's degree in 1970. June's excellent work continued, and the next year she was awarded a Doctor of Science by the same university. 
Through the years, June made many discoveries, which she shared in more than 100 science papers she wrote or co-wrote. In 1967, she, the paper she co-authored with David Terrell, The Morphology of the Three Previously Uncharacterized Human Respiratory Viruses That Grow in Organ Culture, informed scientists about the coronavirus. Her remarkable work also included creating the first image of the rubella virus, discovering that the hepatitis B virus is made of two components, and helping to publish high quality images of the HIV virus, which causes AIDS. In 2003, an illness called SARS broke out. It was caused by a coronavirus named SARS-CoV. Many people with the disease suffered from lung infections, which revealed how new types of coronavirus could be very dangerous to people. As researchers looked for answers to prevent and cure SARS, they turned to June's discoveries for help. Today, scientists are studying a new coronavirus called SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID-19. When this illness appeared in 2019, researchers used the technology and methods June developed to identify it as a coronavirus. June Almeida's groundbreaking work is providing scientists in the fight against COVID-19 with important tools and knowledge as they strive to create medicines and a vaccine to help the world make the world a better, a healthier place. June and the electron microscope. June learned how to operate an electron microscope when she began working at the Ontario Cancer Institute in 1956. The type of microscopes she used was a trans transmission electron microscope or TEM. Instead of using a glass lens to focus like an ordinary optical microscope, the powerful TEM shot a beam of electrons at the sample to be examined. First, June put the sample she wanted to study on a tiny round grid. Then she placed the grid on, in the TEM, which then sent a stream of electrons through magnetic coils at the sample. The TEM recorded how much the electrons penetrated the sample, creating a detailed picture called a micrograph. June was so skilled at preparing samples and using the TEM, her sharp, sharp micrograph images appeared in many scientific publications and textbooks.